If you're trying to make a business out of your art, you can do so much more with your finished artwork than just selling the original piece. As artists, it's so hard to break out of the pattern of constantly churning out new work in order to keep sales up. But by making your art into a variety of different products, you can keep making money with the same piece of art you made months ago. Hi, I'm Madam Berry, and I make accessories and apparel with my artwork. Today, I'm going to go through all of the different products that you can make with your artwork and how to do so, starting from the easiest and most accessible and ending with products that you might need to get specially manufactured. There are more than 60 product ideas in this video, so stick around through the whole thing so that you don't miss out on any ideas that you may never have thought of. Editing Barry here, pardon this, I just washed my hair, but I just wanted to offer a quick disclaimer that I have not tried every single one of the products that I'm about to list, and I would not suggest selling every single product in this video. If you do that, you're gonna end up diluting your brand and creating decision paralysis in your customer, and the customer's just gonna bounce from your website. So pick the products that fit your brand, your audience, and your audience artwork the most. Before we get into it, I just want to say that I have a bunch of new stuff in my store, and if you like what I'm showing here, check it out over at madamberry.com. That's all, let's get into the video now. Without any equipment at all, except for a scanner if you're a traditional artist, you can start making products right away by offering digital downloads for sale. Digital downloads are an accessible starting point not just as an artist, but also as a buyer, since there's no shipping involved and they're often more affordable than physical goods. You could offer phone and desktop backgrounds, printables such as stationery, print your own stickers or prints, calendars, e-art books, or whatever you can think of, honestly. These are easy to offer on just about any storefront, including Etsy or Gumroad, or your own self-hosted store. I offer digital downloadable wallpapers via my Patreon and also Discord memberships. My Discord is free to join, but premium members get monthly art formatted as phone and desktop wallpapers and sometimes other goodies when I have the opportunity to make them. The possibilities are pretty limitless for downloads, just make sure to be clear in the listing that this is for a digital product and that no physical item will be shipped, and that you have a clause in place regarding redistribution so that people can't print and resell your art. I'm so sorry if you can hear my cat playing with her jingle ball. <laughs> Speaking of prints, that brings us to the next product, and one of the most common, prints. You can make prints yourself if you have a decent home printer, or you can find a printing service like Cat Print or a local printer to make prints for you. These each have their own pros and cons. A printer is expensive, but printing services usually have a minimum order quantity that might leave you with excess stock. Ask me how I know. I've been offloading excess prints for months by sticking them in orders as freebies. You can also get prints made on demand with no minimum order quantity. How it works is when somebody places an order, the fulfillment service will print and ship the item for you via a service such as Printful or Redbubble, which also produce a variety of other products that we'll get into. Just make sure to get a sample made for yourself to test the quality before selling them to customers. With any product, no matter what it is, it's important that you test it first at least once and have it in your hands so that you can judge the quality. Prints don't have to be on paper either. You can get prints manufactured on canvas, metal, or wood for a more luxurious effect. Along with prints, bookmarks are a small and easy item to make. I've gotten mine made with Vistaprint, but you could make them yourself if you have a printer and double-sided paper. Stickers are the last item that you could make at home without getting into specialized equipment. Plus, stickers are really popular since they're small and accessible to people on most budgets. You could cut them by hand, or you could get a specialized machine. I held off on getting my cutting machine until I was producing enough stickers that cutting them by hand would risk a repetitive stress injury. But for small batches, some careful use of scissors or a rotary cutter would get the job done. You can also get special papers like holographic or clear vinyl, or look into a manufacturer such as Sticker App, who can do all sorts of stunning combos of holographic, glitter, semi-transparency, even glow-in-the-dark, and more. Unless you have specialized equipment at home, these next items will likely take working with a manufacturer. But real quick, if you're finding this video helpful so far, hit the thumbs up button so that YouTube knows to share it with more people who want to find this info. Circling back to paper items, stationery is an increasingly popular category, and some items like notepads and greeting cards are fairly easy to produce at home. 
Others, such as sticky notes, notebooks, sketchbooks, or washi tape, would likely need the services of a manufacturer. With the right formatting, your small sticker design could work great in the corners of a lined notepad or repeated on washi tape. You could even sell custom printed pens as upsells so that people have matching stationery and writing utensils. Art books and zines can be done in a very DIY style or professionally printed for gorgeous full color spreads, depending on your aesthetic goals. There are some easy printable DIY zine templates out there for you to follow. You can print books at home if you have the equipment or find a manufacturer. In the past, I've used Mixum for my art books and I recommend their services highly. A really trendy printing technique right now is called Risograph. Riso printing uses different spot tones overlapped with each other, printed via a specialized printing machine. You can usually find local Risograph printers in a nearby city, and these make for great trendy indie looking zines. Speaking of full color print items though, calendars are a great way to display a small collection of art and provide a useful product to your customer. If you've got 12 pieces of art with a kind of similar theme, you can put a calendar together in pretty much no time. Moving away from paper products now, keychains are a small and attractive item that can be budget friendly to make and to sell. You can make them yourself with clay if you have the skill, but unless you want to remake your art by hand over and over again, you may want to get them printed by a manufacturer. You can get many different kinds of printed keychains made, including acrylic, wood, metal, and more. Pay attention to the minimum order quantity. If you're just starting out, you don't want to be buying 100 keychains unless you know you're going to sell them all. Almost anything that you can make a keychain out of, you can also make a pin. Just instead of a hole on top for jump ring, you put a pin back on it. The most trendy type of pin to make right now is an enamel pin, but these can be expensive to produce and come with some artwork limitations. Colors have to be separated by a line of metal, unless you pay extra for screen printing on top of the pin. Acrylic and wood pins, however, are less expensive to make and usually have lower minimum order quantities, and can print in full color with gradients. You can also make pinback buttons, which are made with a printed piece of paper pressed between a metal disc and a plastic cover. These can be made at home using a button press for fairly cheap, or via a manufacturer, and they can come in different shapes such as hearts, stars, and even kitty faces. If you can make a keychain out of it, you can probably make earrings or a pendant necklace out of it too, provided the design downscales well. I actually make these with shrink film paper and some epoxy resin for a shiny protective coating, but clay charms and manufactured acrylic charms also work. Heck, you could even get really fancy with a laser cutter and I would be extremely jealous of you. Embroidered patches are a fun and attractive way to let people choose where to add some flair to their clothing or bags. They can be custom ordered for die cut shapes, that means the outline of the patch follows the shape of the artwork or even printed on demand in basic shapes like circles or squares. This idea can be kind of combined with a keychain to make an embroidered luggage tag. I think these are really cool and useful for customers who travel a lot. If you have an embroidery machine, embroidered items can even be made at home. And again, I will be jealous. I'm not allowed to buy any more machines. I don't have enough outlets to put them in. For the entertainment expo and anime convention lover, lanyards are a popular item that can be made using a manufacturer like Vograce. On the topic of customizing clothing, it has never been easier to print your artwork on a t-shirt or other apparel such as pants, jackets, socks, or even shoes. Screen printing can be done at home, but if you want full color printing, you'll have to look into a manufacturer to make direct-to-garment or sublimation printed apparel. Luckily, these can be done via print-on-demand services such as Printful, which has an incredibly wide variety of products to print on, as well as embroidery services so that you can make embroidered apparel and accessories like these cozy knit beanies I've made. Clothes aren't the only thing that can be printed on. Tote bags are a fun way to add extra flair to any outfit and are being widely used in favor of plastic shopping bags. So if you want to offer something that is both useful and allows a customer to accessorize in a variety of fun ways, tote bags are a great option. There are many other bag types that you can get printed on demand too, including laptop sleeves, duffel bags, backpacks, fanny packs, and more. To offer something unique for a customer's personal life, you could offer art on pillow covers, blankets, wall tapestries, shower curtains, rugs, towels, or bed linens. 
Some manufacturers such as Society6 have the capability to produce peel and stick wallpaper and gift wrapping paper. If your target audience is interested in home decor or your art caters to an aesthetic that suits this sort of product, this can be a great way to increase the variety of products you offer. For some more office-oriented ideas, wall clocks, mouse pads, and pencil cases can be easily printed on demand. Large format desk mats are gaining popularity, especially with gamers, streamers, and anybody looking to improve their office aesthetic. If your art can fit on a phone background, it can probably also fit on a phone case. Extra points for phones being something that everybody carries around with them everywhere, leading to the potential of, ooh, where'd you get that case? You got some automatic store promo built in. Home and office decor are both beautiful and useful, offering new ways for customers to display art in a practical way without taking up finite wall space with paper prints. Seriously, like, I have no more room on my walls for prints. I know a lot of people also can relate. What I do have is room for more throw pillows. There's always room for more throw pillows. Did you know that Society6 can make custom printed furniture like tables and stools and stuff? Because I didn't until I researched for this video, and now I'm really curious what this quality is like. Has anybody ordered furniture from Society6? What is, what is it like? Tell me. You can also get your artwork printed on ready-to-sew fabric using a service like Spoonflower and make literally anything you want out of that fabric. If you sew, if you have good sewing skills, the opportunities are quite literally endless. Some other practical ideas for printing your art are on mugs, water bottles, and tumblers. You can find some print-on-demand options for these or get them printed in bulk. I know I could use more reminders to hydrate, so could you. If your audience has a cozy cottage vibe, custom jigsaw puzzles could be a huge hit. Unlike some of the previous options listed, you don't even have to do too much extra formatting to these, since it's literally just a rectangle that the manufacturer cuts in random places. So that's everything that I could think of to produce with art that you've already made. Most of it just takes a little bit of cleanup and reformatting in order to use in different products. These aren't the only options. If you have the creativity and the means, you can make just about anything from custom bags to plushies and more. If you have any other ideas that I haven't listed, leave them in the comments below. And remember, your art has the potential to be used on multiple products. Reusing the same design across multiple different kinds of products means that somebody is more likely to find something on a product that they will use. Stickers, keychains, and other small format items are great things to repeat designs across. Anything rectangular can be reformatted to fit different designs, including phone cases, puzzles, and more. And if you have particularly catchy and relatable designs, they go great on apparel. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you want to know more about producing apparel with your artwork, I have a more in-depth video over here. I'll see you over there. Stay weird.